Hello YouTube, right, we're off. Now, let me explain this video. I thought I would do um, a little talky video, really, on um, bargains, model railways, saving money, what to look for, pitfalls, various sort of things when buying locos, wagons, that type of thing. Buildings, anything, really. Now, where I'll begin, for instance, I'll go off topic slightly and from locomotives I will go to buses. Now, my layout is non-specific. It's not obsessed with era, uh, it's not obsessed with it's the big four, it's British Rail, it's 80s, it's 70s, it's independence. It's... The way I look at my railway is it started off as me wanting to build a train set with trees and things so I could play with my toy trains. So if I'm going to get round that in a legitimate way then my scenery is fairly nondescript. The buildings and things could transpose over many eras and the locomotives provided I ran two that were similar it could be a certain age with a preserved railway line and at that point I can run anything on that one because preserved railways have lots of different eras so it could be a nondescript preserved railway therefore I can run whatever I want when I want and it doesn't interfere with any of the um, the die hard should we say the more fanatical of us um, so on to buses and bargains eBay other auction sites are available is it worth the risk? Now, this is the point where I would pull out a completely smashed bus and tell you, don't do it. However, here we have an EFE. It came boxed. Now, to be fair, the box was smashed. <laughs> in quite, quite a bad shape. They're, these are the ones that come in the... Uh, no, it's not EFE. This is the Corgi Original Omnibus. Apologies. These come in plastic cases. Uh, have I got one available to show? Let's have a look. It's stacked them over here. Right, here's what they should look like. Solid box shape. I won't show you the one that it came in because I don't want to sweep it up again. <laughs> But needless to say, it was still screwed to the base, so thankfully, the vehicle itself has come out of the post unscathed. It's completely unscratched, it's as new, and if you're like me, and believe things should come out of boxes and be enjoyed, then that's a good condition for it to arrive in. Now, how much did it cost, you say? Now, free postage, so we can eliminate that out of the argument. I believe this one was free posted. Um... It was an auction, starting price of 99p, nobody else bid on it, I won it. A brand new bus for 99p. Now, it is a Bradford City Tramways bus. Now, again, that belongs to my preserved railway, and they use the local bus station, so I can run any bus I like of any era at any age, because... That's just how I roll, baby. Right, bus, done, 99p. Now, locomotives and the ability to spot pitfalls and weather auction sites and car boot sales are worth the risk. Now, this suspect locomotive is my Lima Class 55. This is of YouTube fame. This featured in a bullfrog snot the results. Now I haven't tidied it up since I did that test. The bullfrog snot is still a bit lumpy. I still need to strip it off and apply it properly. Um, I did see a video where somebody watered it down slightly and applied it with a paintbrush rather than a cocktail stick. This might prove slightly more effective at making it more even. That is to be tried. However, this locomotive is the pitfalls side of eBay. It looks fairly pleasant. Um, paint's not scratched, silver 
spray around the windows is complete on both sides. Decals, well, it's sprayed on really. Not too bad at all. It's basic, no handrails, no lights. Get a bit of white paint there. Um, you know, it's not perfect. The fronts are pretty terrible. Horrible yellow, terrible head codes. Um, buffers smashed, missing. Um, and that side, all oh, smashed, wrecked, missing. Nasty Lima bogies. Anyway, that one was, uh, we'll say, £20. It didn't run very well. It wouldn't pull the skin off the custard. Um, give it an incline and it would just, well, it would curl up and die, really. It wouldn't even attempt it. It would just slip and slip and slip. It couldn't pull coaches at all in a straight line on a level ground. Hence the bullfrog snot video. Now it will pull virtually my entire layout round my, lay <laughs> round my layout without any issue. Um, apart from things fall off because it's just too long. Um, so once I've sorted out the bullfrog snot, that's fine. However, internally, I'm not going to take it to pieces. I can't be bothered. See the other video for that. The wiring was terrible. There was bits of wire just twisted around the uh, points on the ring field motor. There's no soldering, it was all falling to pieces and a mess. So I cleaned all the carpet out of all the axles, um, cleaned the wheels, cleaned all the cogs on the ring field motor, made sure they all went back in the same place that they came out. Um, just give it a really good going over. And like I said, now it grips because we've got rid of what was broken lima traction tyres once i get the bullfrog snot level and do that correctly it and replace the buffer beams in theory it's absolutely fine for 20 quid but a lot of work will have to go on still now the comparison airfix not everybody's cup of tea one would think um I'm not 100% sure of the time scale of manufacturers, so I won't be able to give you a timeline of when Hornby started, finished, Triang started, Playtoy started, Mainline started, Airfix started, Hornby as we now it, know it now started, Backman, Lima. I haven't got that sort of information. However, Airfix to me seems to be around the 80s type of after Triang stopped making the lumpy wheels and went to uh, Hornby Railways, should we say. Um, still the old Hornby, but, you know, um, with, with the thinner wheels and the ability to navigate Pico Points, for instance. Um, Airfix is around that era. Uh, I would class them the same as Mainline. Um, they're not overly detailed, you'd think, um, for the price that... They're, they're fairly simple, um, the tooling on the plastic moulding could be classed as simple in today's standards of your uh, top-end Hornby and top-end Backman and Helgen and, and various proprietary makes. But we're talking about bargains here. So why do you want to spend £200 on a digital locomotive that's going to fail every now and then and be an absolute nightmare in the old days forgive me young'uns if you're listening if there is any um those of us that know um you had a ford cortina for instance it, it didn't work you lifted the bonnet you hit certain bits with a hammer it worked game over no problem done nowadays all your cars if you have an issue with your motor vehicle if you haven't got a laptop or a garage that's got hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of top tech you won't know what's wrong with it and it's all a bright pain in the thank you so digital locos um i have uh, some subscribers on my channel who've got very interesting videos on latest hornby models that are digital i can't remember which class it was possibly the 20 not too sure um but comes with a, a, a an astronomical um, printed circuit board with resistors and, and, and all sorts of mess that I don't understand soldered onto it and this 
gives it the DCC ability to turn certain lights on and off and change direction and possibly make noises at a later date and, and various other things, interior cab lights, it all looks lovely. But from what I've been watching on YouTube, it's absolutely terrible. It completely fails, things don't work. It's possibly the worst Chinese manufactured Hornby ever. Um, your man's had many replacements and each one of them has failed and in the end what he's done is he's completely stripped out the DCC abilities, completely stripped out the lighting, put the circuit board in the bin and basically just wired it analogue styly uh, back in the day and it works fine, runs lovely. Uh, no lights but what would you rather have? You know a flash loco that does 10 feet or a not so flash loco that will make it all the way around your layout with the train it's pulling. Far more sense. Right, so back to airfix. No DCC, no flashy lights, no high detail, no driver, no interior cab painting. Let me show you. Here we go. Now, let's get it so you can see as best as we can. I will turn it at points. Now this is a LMS Fowler. Now it seems to be permanently connected with a metal bar and a rather crude wire. Not ideal. Big fat silver Airfix stroke mainline wheels. Not an issue because the gauge between the flange and the edge of the wheel is absolutely fine for Pico points and modern layouts. Not too sure how it would cope with uh, the Code 75, but on the Code 100 it's absolutely fine. Uh, no scratches. Not a speck of dust on it. Perfect all the way around. Nice, bright, somewhat fake, but nice bright red on the back. Hoses, clips, all buffers. Uh, okay. Printed cab interior, very pleasant. Metal handrails, not the moulded plastic trying in fear of horrible things. And even a nice one on the front. More hoses. Simple. But clean you can tell that's a steam train it's red it's black it's got its number it's got coal gears nice fine detail again 20 pounds as new tender drive some feel that's inferior it might not be as powerful as today's locos but you know if you've got a million pounds you can buy whatever you like <laughs> if you live in the real world you have to pay peanuts for your hobby because <laughs> it takes you a while to save up for things. Even minimal locos take a while to save up for. Um, but that's the locos. This one is very good. I took it out of the box, put it straight on the layout, touched the power, minimal power, and it ran straight away. Perfectly smooth start. It is airfix, so it's a little bit noisy. But... It's absolutely fine at slow speeds, and you don't want to race these things anyway, because you'll kill them. But it's not even been run in yet, and it still runs lovely. Now, wagons. What do you do with wagons? Things to remember for wagons. You can buy cheap second-hand wagons all the time. But, be wary. Check the make check the wheels depending on what layout you've got depends on what ones will run I mean it goes the same with the locos and your coaches uh, but wagons with them being so small and light will bounce very very easily now here we have a old triang truck there we go now this one here Absolute peanuts to buy, not an issue, barely worth discussing. In fact, it came with something else that was even just as cheap. That's absolutely fine, the detail's fair, 
but it is old triang. So the issue is these big old wheels. Now this one's not too bad. I think these might come out. But a lot of the triang coaches and wheels have uh, the axles through the boxes, right through the wheels and through the box the other side. They're preventing you from changing it for a more modern type of wheel. Now these won't run on my layout. They get to the points and they just go... So, doesn't matter how cheap it is on eBay. It's pointless buying because I can't run them. So unless I want them to sit on a shelf, which is what it's not really about, I can't buy them. So that's something to bear in mind. If you want to run old Triang trains, then you need old Hornby points. Don't have the Pico, certainly don't bother going for Code 100 or any form of posh EM or gauges that are, are off piste because you, all of a sudden your price of your locos and your trains just goes through the roof. The cheapest way is double O or HO and if you want to have Triang you have to have the old track, a lot of which is steel and might take some cleaning. The cheapest way I will find is to go for the nickel silver Hornby track which is available as set track and straight track now or the Pico nickel silver track. Uh, it's probably best not to mix them. I'm sure you can. I have. Um, a lot of people say don't. Um, but the problem is when you have that nice nickel silver track and points you eliminate the use of triang because they just bounce so they're fine to go on the shelf but pointless to run because it won't work and it will just ruin the fun because it doesn't matter how perfect your track is it will get to a point or a crossing and it will just blip so now the whole point of the video the little secret bit where's it gone he's gone and lost it i have gone and lost it i put it somewhere gone down fatal right let's pause and i'm paused but you'd never notice would you really all right now here we go Ta -da! i give you one triang crane now here we get on to another type of is it worth it financial question it's worth what you think it's worth in the end now for me this being triang with the wheels that i possibly could change possibly not wouldn't want to risk it is no good for me it looks nice and as a side piece it would be very interesting now i did butcher one in a previous video and place it on a station let me get it as if by magic it appears right this one I glued to a bottle cap and stuck on my uh, station or loading area so it would rotate and do its thing now Mr David Atkins in Canada one of my fellow subscribees informed me that this is a well sought after model and he hopes that I could repair it to its former glory and he said that he would rather much like one so what I did is I found one and this is where we get into the price of is it worth it now financially for me that could have been 50p and it's just would have sat on the side of the layout maybe we would have painted it with lots of rusty paint or maybe I would have took it to pieces and put it on a station but to somebody else this is worth quite a lot because they've always wanted one like this they're hard to get and to me that means this is worth far more to somebody than it is to me so they would probably pay quite a lot for that because it cost me nothing really 
I'm going to send this little beauty over to David in Canada. So it's going to go all the 